comic fans what's going on it is mike from the hardcover comic here today i'm very excited to announce a crossover video once in a while um another youtube channel will reach out to us and we'll be surprised that we have any sort of people reaching out to us at all period um and this is one of those times um, i was very fortunate enough to speak with mike from the comic archive um, a fantastic YouTube channel that's all about comics. And this year and last year, I guess mostly last year for Mike, it was the year of custom binds. He's been doing a lot of custom bind videos lately. I highly suggest you check those out. Um, he's got some awesome designs, some really great binds and ideas. Um, so I highly suggest checking out his channel. We talked all about custom binds because for THC, the hardcover comic, it is the year of custom binds. Matt and I are going crazy this year, getting things bound, buying custom binds, selling custom. It's been a whole bunch of craziness with custom binds, which reminds me, if you have your own custom bind submissions, new ones you've had done or ones you have in your collection already, please send them to us. We'll gladly show them off. If you want to plug your Instagram, you want to plug anything along with them, just send them to us at our email down in the description below, thehardcovercomic at gmail.com. Mike Squared coming at you. Before we get into that, though, if you're new to this channel, subscribe, all that jazz. This is what we do on a regular basis, multiple videos a week. We try live streams, things like that. We have a Patreon as well. We do hardcover comic giveaways there. Check that out. And you can also hit us up for dust jackets. $10, that's it. A graphic cover designs as well. $10 flat fee, that's what we do it for. We do table of contents as well. If, if that's what you want, just hit us up, we can talk. Now, let's get into the uh, conversation with Mike from the Comic Archive. Uh, welcome everyone. We have a special episode here today with me. I have a very special guest to talk about one of my very, very favorite subjects surrounding comics. Um, this is Mike from The Hardcover Comic here to chat with me today about custom binds. Yes, glad to be here. Thank you for, uh, thank you for the introduction. Yeah, it's uh, at, at The Hardcover Comic, we're, we're a YouTube channel for those of you that are unfamiliar. Um, it's the year of custom binds for us. Just sort of spontaneously happened this whole concept, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's what's happening sort of, um, in our inner circle. And, uh, yeah, I mean, custom binds have pretty much taken over. So Matt is the other guy I run the channel with, and, um, we've just custom binds have just become what we want to do. That's it pretty much, um, sort of moving away from official releases, things like that. And, uh, we've got a little cult growing, I think slowly. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to, like, there needs to be more custom binding going yeah. on. I think there's not enough. Um, yeah, I can, and I can see, I know for me, one thing, like, I try to do binding regularly, but this year yeah. with, like, quarantines and there's not much to do, it's like, yeah. what else am I going to do but sit around with my collection and fantasize about, well, <laughs> the best way to present these right. comics is this way and that way. Yeah, yeah. It's um, It's been a great rabbit hole. It's been an incredible rabbit hole to go down. Um, and it's been great to see what other people do, you know, especially when I was starting out, I remember in general getting into custom binds. I had been buying Omnis and Deluxe Editions and absolute official releases for a couple years at that point. Um, and I stumbled across, I, I forget how it happened, but I stumbled across this Marvel Masterworks Uncollected Editions forum and I just started seeing these custom binds and I was like, hold on, hold on. What, what's happening here? Are these like special editions people are buying from like the writers and artists? And then, no, I found out it just turns out people are taking their single issues and putting them into a hardcover that looks really cool. It can look like a library book. It can look like a fancy omnibus like the Sandman books. Um, I mean, whatever. You can almost do anything at this point with a custom bind, graphic covers, whatever you want to do. Um, and that, that ignited the passion for me. Um, that was when I started looking into what single issues I could get together and start chopping up and uh, sending over to a local bindery. It was, nice. a, it was a thrill. Yeah, I remember uh, when I was starting out, you know, I, was, I had a lot of trouble finding a bindery. I think like these days, I'm really jealous because there's a really nice community yeah. of people the binderies that do this stuff have like a section of their website just about comics and saying yep. like, Oh, we know how to specialize with our custom die stamps and right. graphic covers and dust jackets and all that fun stuff. Yeah. 
yeah they've got i mean now it's 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 amazing um they'll do everything for you You pretty much just send them the comics and uh, some sort of design idea that you have um others will just do everything for you it's great yeah i remember that being a big struggle especially for me in canada um you know with the states it's like houch and herring and robinson um they're pretty popular they're pretty easy to find but uh at least for me personally in ontario it was kind of tough and i was also looking for something local enough that i could drive to uh, just because if I'm sending 10 or 12, 15 volumes to get done at the same time and get like a volume discount, I'm going to get battered with shipping fees, especially once they're bound. I mean, that's going to be a crazy shipping expense. So that was also, yeah, a big struggle. But now it's it's pretty easy. I mean, there are multi, multiple YouTube channels that will give you a rundown of uh, where to go, what to do. Um, it's been great. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I love seeing custom binds. It makes me happy every day. It does. Every day. So I seem to, it, we seem to get new emails every day. Someone submitting new custom binds they found on eBay or that they had made themselves. It's awesome. It's been so much fun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the variety out there is, is amazing, both in terms of, I think, like what people feel they want to bind, but also right. the binds themselves. Like as an object, those binds are usually really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they're all super unique, right? Which makes them right away uh, appealing. I guess when did when did you start getting into custom binding? I mean, I started. This is a while ago. Um, I remember wanting to bind. Um, I was really into the Ultimates. Okay. And I was like, oh, I want like a hardcover of this. And it was before Marvel had released their OHCs of it. Right. So I was looking around and I found this place in Texas called Library Binding Company. And I was okay. like, is this a, is this real? Like, yeah, yeah. you know, what am I sending my stuff to? But like, I got in touch with them and sent them. And I remember being really worried about it. So I mm -hmm. sent them, I had these, um, like when I was growing up, I was super into Spawn. And yeah. so I had these reader copies that were like beat to hell. And okay. so I sent them those and I was like, you know what, if they mess that up, like no the issue was falling apart anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it came back great. And I did those ultimate issues. Um, of course, then the, the official release came out yeah, and I was right, like, well, right. it's oversized Brian Hitchard. I kind of yeah. have to get those. Yeah. Yeah. That's always one of the, big problems with custom binds right and it's not necessarily a problem it's it's sort of a risk you take yeah um it's all part of the game though right you can you can end up having a book that no one else will have bound in a hardcover that there's never going to be an official release for or you could bind something and then like it happened to you the next week they re they, re they announce an official release and you're like well damn it yeah it's fine it's still mine i guess but yeah <laughs> yeah i did that like uh, uh, I think it was like two years ago. I really loved that um, JLA, The Nail, that Alan Davis wrote yeah. and drew. And yeah. I was like, it's been however many years. They're never going to make a collection of this. Right. I have the issues right here. Why don't I bind them? Yeah. And I swear, as soon as that came back from the bindery, <laughs> I saw that they were doing the like, deluxe giant edition. And I was yeah. like, I'm yeah. not buying it. I'm not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I was I was pretty lucky too. Um, recently, I sold my Captain America by Rick Remender custom omnibus. It was one of my first ones actually that I had done, and um, I sold it. And then I think it like a month later they were announced the official Omni. I was like, thank God, because I was yeah. able to sell that bind for a good amount of money. I'm pretty sure if I had waited a little bit longer and that official release had been announced, my luck wouldn't have been so good. Definitely. Um, but that's that, the best part about it is you can always do whatever you want. Like um, I've been experimenting with like anthologies now, just there are writers that will just do mini series for whatever reason. And so I'm not going to bind six issues, but if I get three minis in one volume, I'll do it. Yeah. I mean, it's a yeah. great way to think about it too. Like, you know, collecting a bunch of stuff. And I like the whole reading experience. Like when you put all of a, like a writer or an artist or whomever, you put all of that stuff together, you yeah. kind of view it a little differently than if it was just this many and then just that many on their right. own, you know? Right. Have you, uh, cause I see that, is that Green Lantern that I see behind you? I guess my eyes aren't that good, but yeah. <laughs> that is Green Lantern. That's, it the, is. Um, that's the Jeff Johns. And that was like one of those ones where I had the official Omni. I right. had the first two and 
I really love like that was my first exposure to Green Lantern in a way that made me fall in love with the character. Yeah. And then I found out from a friend that, well, that's only really half the story. The rest is in the Green Lantern core. Yeah. And so then I started getting the issues and being like, oh, this stuff is amazing. Yeah. Why didn't they include this? <laughs> um, and so I said, you know, I'm going to, I found like you can, I found like a cheap set of the Jeff Johns uh, issues. It wasn't complete. Um, like okay. the new 52 stuff uh, was not included. But it was most of it, and it was enough to get me started. And then I got some of the Green Lantern core. Nice. And that 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 set over there took me, I think, two or three different trips to the binder for. Oh, like wow. I did the first, I think, ten of them, and then uh, the last six or seven of them were in a, in another uh, uh, right. batch that I sent over. That's what. Yeah, that would be a lot to do all at once. But that's uh, that's a pretty big set. That's the kind of set I hope I can have one day for any sort of series. Yeah. Um, I know, like Matt, he has I think like thirty volumes of Amazing Spider-Man, like thirty volumes of Batman, which is like a co- collection of Detective Comics, Batman, Legends of the Dark Knight, all those series. Just it's crazy. It's crazy. I'd love to have that one day. Yeah. Um, I kind of got these. I was able to get these Hulk custom binds from someone in the States last year. Um, They're all sitting in the States. Unfortunately, I can't get to them without the borders being open. Right. But um, it collects like 20 years worth of incredible Hulk. And then I have single issues for another decade or so. So hopefully that'll be, that'll be my, my large set for the Hulk, a character I've never really been too interested in, but (laughs) we'll see. Yeah. I mean, I, I will say every time I see somebody's uh, collection, um, it reminds me that they loved that run or care. There was right. something about it that sparked something in them to want to build this out and yeah. uh, get the whole, either the whole story or a specific part of the story, you know? Yeah. So for the, for what the, the hardcover comic has dubbed as, uh, as the year of custom binds, what, um, what sort of bind plans do you have? Uh, well, there's a couple that I'm copying from you guys. Um, okay. uh, there. Here, I actually have a couple of them around. Uh, I'm doing um, uh, DC Metal. Um, nice. Because we needed an omnibus of that and never got it. DC you Metal, go. you mean? Yeah. Hell's I know, right? They as Snyder said like two years ago there was going to be an omni for it. Yeah, and there's enough. Me- I know. I mean, it would be a small omni, but it's still like they put out all of those hardcovers of like, well, here's the main series and then here's this, but like the main series doesn't really make a lot of sense without the supplemental uh, stuff. And so I, you know, when I was reading it, I just read the main series, not knowing just how vital those things were going to be. And then I found out about, I was like, Oh, this is so much better. I mean, I love Scott Snyder's uh, writing, but I was like, "Eh, did I miss something? So yeah. I've been getting it's, into, uh, I'm also trying to figure out if I should include the uh, death metal stuff because that's going to be collected pretty soon. Right, right. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm doing death metal in a, a separate volume entirely. Yeah. Um, the problem was, for me at least with, with Dark Knight's metal, is the cardstock covers. It's, um, it's not the, like, it's not, the, the binding will be fine. It's not going to compromise the strength of the bind. But when you're, actually reading it those card stocks are just like they're always pushing up on you you know they really um, are they're just dividers basically between issues which is good i guess in one way but it's never gonna lay flat as nicely as you'd like to it's the only problem with those cards but they're so nice i love they those are. covers you can yeah. do that in an omnibus an official release you can have those holographic covers i tried one time where i took um i was binding jla avengers because like I didn't have the, um, they put out that nice absolute edition yeah. and all that stuff. I didn't have that and I missed out on it and that's yeah. crazy prices, but I had the yeah. issues and those have those really heavy cardstock covers. Mm. So I tried putting them at the end because it's like, it's George Perez art. I don't want to get rid right. of it, but of course that was almost even worse because it was like four or five of them together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just constantly fighting yeah um yes they i have that one and then i also it's not like i made the same mistake i didn't really have a choice um i I had the same thing happen with my exo man of war which was like 30 issues all cardstock covers oh yeah um 
which is also kind of the same problem. I'm looking, I don't want to touch it now, but it kind of looks like the binding's coming apart as I mentioned that. Uh oh. We could take a look at it. Um, but yeah, yeah, those cardstock covers will get you. I don't know why DC hasn't released an omnibus for that. I don't know why they haven't done a volume two for Scott Snyder's Batman run. I don't, I don't understand what's happening. I don't either. And it, it's made me really nervous. So like when they announced the um, burn, John Byrne, Man of Steel series coming to hardcover, yep. I was like, I really want to read that. I've read parts of it and I would love yeah. to read the whole thing. And so uh, I bought the uh, first book and I was like, you know what? It was right around the time DC was doing a bunch of changes with their collections department. And I was like, I could see this very easily being the only one they release. Yep. So I went out and I started tracking down the issues. And so now nice. I'm in this place where I'm like, I've got the first one. I know the second one's about to release. Yeah. But like, if something happens, then I'm going to continue on doing customs and try to match it to the regular yep. series. Yeah. Yeah. It's frustrating. It's really frustrating with DC. Like I have, I have a whole long box full of trade paperbacks that they had started to collect series in and then stopped. Um, I think there are like three or four volumes of Peter David's Aquaman, Cassandra Kane, Batgirl, Supergirl by Peter David, like yeah, a, a bunch more in there. It's so sad. It's so annoying. But you know, that, that always brings me Business. back to why I love the customs is because like you yeah. can fix, you can like fix that. You can uh, take those trades, mix in some regular issues for whatever's missing. Yep. And all of a sudden you've got like a really good, I love the reading experience aspect of it too. Like doing the mapping, trying to figure out the best order to tell the story in. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Mapping is always one of the fun parts, sort of like uh, preparing your tactics before battle, you know? Um, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. And depending, depending on what kind of book you're doing, um, I've, I feel like I haven't been able to even do a book that's challenging enough where I can sort of mix things in like, like doing a project, like maybe 80s Batman or 70s Batman where those titles crossed over a lot and there was sort of a need to track what's happening. Yeah. Um, that would be a lot, a lot of fun to do for sure. I don't know about modern comics, maybe like Jonathan Hickman's X-Men. I feel like yeah. that could be fun to map if you're trying to put all the titles into, you know, sort of like a Dawn of X hardcover anthology series. That would be fun. That would be right now. I'm uh, the other big one. So I'm really excited about metal because yeah. I think it was like an event that like, once you got the full scope of it, you really understood the the shape of the story. Yeah. I'm trying to do it with uh, civil Marvel civil war because okay. they never did an omnibus of that either. Right. Where it's like, cause those titles, like everything was tied into it. And then having all of the issues were really referring to what was happening in the, in each other. And right. like, I liked the main title, Steve McNiven's art was great, but it always yeah. felt like the writing was rushed. Mm -hmm. And then when I started reading it kind of alongside some of the tie-ins, all of a sudden right. it was like, well, now this feels like a really substantive yeah. thing, yeah. experience. Yeah. Yeah. You get sort of the, uh, you get the full picture. Yeah. That was one of the craziest things about metal and then death metal too, is I was surprised how much I was enjoying them. I like yeah. Scott Snyder for the most part. I wasn't a big fan of his Justice League, so I was worried. But, I mean, it's it's crazy what they've put together. Like, the craziest ideas, too. I mean, how much more powerful can you make this character? And they're like, well, here, we're going to put him in this character's body, which it's like, okay, that character was already a god. And it's, it's yeah. yeah. And they somehow make it work. They make it work as insane as it is, perpetua, all of it. It's gotten so, where do you go? Where do you go from here? I don't, I don't even know. know. Are the characters going to start fighting the writers? <laughs> like, are they going? Is that the four? How the fourth wall is going to break next? It's crazy. Yeah, super ambitious, but they pulled it off somehow. Um, they did. The only thing that is unfortunate about custom binds, and again, it's not really even a problem because we're sort of spoiled, is the fact that it is standard size artwork. Yeah, um, I mean that's tough, and and that's usually whenever I'm, I've made binds plenty of times like I had a uh, Scott Snyder Batman bind that I had done because I had been collecting the issues and I was like you know what I just want a nice way of reading these yeah. and it didn't look like there were many other options and then it, once they put out the oversized Greg Capullo artwork I was like yeah. you know and that's happened 
that's one of the main reasons why I'll, I will upgrade from a bind that I've done to a official release is just right. if they blow up the artwork. Yeah. 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 Me too. Um, but for me, it's, it's mostly absolutes because I just, I hate the binding on DC's Omnis. They try and make these 1500 page monsters, you know, and I just, I don't get it. Just make it smaller. That's again, the one, the thing about custom binds, like even if I make a giant book, I feel like the binding whenever I've had a custom bind made and maybe I'm just lucky the place I go to happens to have this sort of quality, but like, it's great. There is gutter loss sometimes, but I mean, usually I can open the book up. I don't need to hold it or like prop it up with anything. Cause it's this giant unwieldy beast. Yeah. I got really into um, Smythe Zone binding a little while ago. Yeah. Um, House and Bindery is one of the few places I found that offered it. And I like it a lot because you don't get the gutter loss. But one of the trade-offs is you, you, you can't put as much in there. Right. And so I got really used to this like 20 issue maximum mm -hmm. for binding. And I found like it was a really good size. It's like it's easy to handle. You like sit right. on the couch or in bed or wherever it is. And yeah. Like I, I've seen all the pictures and seen all the stories of people buying like book stands for reading their omnis. And I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, I mean, it's nice and I'm sure that's yeah. fun. But like at the same time, I do enjoy just sitting on the couch and reading. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so much better. Um, or just sitting in bed right before bed. You're just reading a little bit. Yeah. Um, you can't do that with, I don't know, the Invisibles omnibus <laughs> or... <clears throat> hundred bullets omnibus it's they're just massive yeah they're just gigantic so with that the the sewn one is that can you remove ad pages for that or do they have, it all has you can't to be intact, right? it all you gotta it's kind of like all or nothing it's one of the big right. downsides of it for a lot of people and i understand that i mean for me i've been you know i've been pleasantly surprised in the last couple of years with the quality of the glued bindings that i've gotten so i'm trying right. this year to do more of those like my um dc metal book is going to be taking the trade paperbacks which don't have ads you know uh i right. just you know took a knife to those cut them up a little bit and yep. um it'll be glued binding and you know places like haushin um i haven't tried herring and robinson yet i just actually decided to give them a shot because i know people really swear by them yeah um yeah These but yeah great. um do you have uh i guess do you have a preferred style of of bind that you make um are, are those green lanterns graphic covers or are those dust jackets on them those are all graphic covers okay. i started doing the graphic covers i usually do a graphic cover with uh the smite zone if possible because yeah. i feel like i do want it to look good and mm -hmm. it's not that much extra like uh right it's basically as unless you're doing um unless you're hiring somebody to do the graphic design for you which yeah. you know you're not I, i've been doing the graphic design myself so like yeah. it's only a few bucks extra to get a graphic cover and i think it looks right. great on the shelf yeah i wish i could do that yeah <laughs> i've i actually just found out a couple of days ago that the place I go to, Lehman, um, they actually do graphic covers. So I'm going to have to ask them about that. Not on their website. I feel like the website hasn't been updated in pretty much since they set it up. So <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to see what happens next time I head there. Yeah, because um, I'd love graphic covers. It I don't I like making dust jackets. I'll usually just make dust jackets for my books, but I'd rather just have it be on the book. I don't need to worry about it. Um, yeah, it looks nice. I really do like it. And yeah, I would, if it's not that much more expensive, it's definitely worth it. Um, yeah, for sure. Especially if I'm having 50 books made in a year. Yeah. We'll see. I don't know if it'll get that high. That's a lot of money, but that's the, we'll the, that's a lot of money, but it's a good goal. Sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can aim for it. And then it's a good thing if I succeed. And it's also a good thing if I don't succeed. Right. So that's true. It's true. I can spin it either way and sleep, uh, sleep easy at night yeah i will say though there's a, a real sense of like satisfaction i get whenever i send the books out all of a sudden like i've got these boxes full of books yeah that i'm like imagining what they're going to look like and just even getting yeah. them for me i'm not near any binders so i do have to ship them and right. do eat that shipping cost but like yeah once it's out and i'm like 
it started, you know, it's months long yeah. that I'm going to have to wait, yeah. especially now yeah. with the pandemic, like everything's so slow. Yeah. But, um, you know, that's a, uh, I love that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I, it's, it started to fly by for me. I think my the last set of books I dropped off in November and um, I really haven't even thought about them much. They should hopefully be ready soon. I don't know. These people never call me. But it's one of the sort of running jokes we have is that Lehman doesn't really, they don't know who I am, even though it's been like five years. I drop off a couple times a year. They don't know who I am. It's fine. <laughs> I get it. They have like universities and important people sending books. I totally understand. That was a surprising uh, thing when I learned that, that like a lot of these places, the comic book binding that, you and I are getting so excited about is such a tiny part of yeah. the business. Yeah. You know? It's nothing for them. Um, I guess unless it's something like uh, Heroes Unbound, is that what they're called? Or Heroes Rebound? Yeah, I think Heroes Rebound, yeah. Heroes Rebound, yeah. I think they're all, all comic-based, so... Yeah. That's all they, that's all they focus on. Um, are you... Uh, I guess our because I know like Matt, for example, he's he's one of he's not really into more modern comics. He's not really planning to buy more modern comics. I know he did like um, James Tynion's recent run on uh, Detective Comics and Tom King's Batman. But are you more of a comic, a modern comic fan or are you more old school? I mean, I'm a little all over the place. I like to think Um, I know that in 2020, most of my binds were for image comics like young blood and spawn okay. which okay. like probably you know is not the best material to be like sp- putting all this effort into but um you know I-, I mean like i read current books as well um right we've been lucky i think that a lot of the stuff that's coming out these days does have a good collection that comes out eventually right um you know but then there's all these gaps where like the older stuff like you know savage dragon was one that i did last year and it was you know there's no good collections of that anywhere so i had i felt like i had if i wanted to read it in color anyway it's like well you got to go and get the issues and get them bound it is kind of crazy that savage dragon because it ran i forget how many issues did it hit 300 it's uh i think it just hit 300 or it's i think yeah it was either 250 or 300 yeah i mean it's been it's been running for a long time. Eric Larson has been has been riding that horse for a very, very long time. I'm surprised <laughs> it hasn't gotten anything. Meanwhile, Spawn's had like, who knows how many different kinds of collections. Granted, I mean, Spawn is gigantic compared yeah. to Savage Dragon, but still, sure. even with even um, Witchblade, it's they're getting new complete hardcover collections. It's very yeah. weird. It's weird though. I mean, like, there's weird gaps in the in like the early '90s stuff because there was this, and you know, I think uh, Valiant is a good example of that, mm. where like you can go out and buy like an Exo Manowar classic omnibus, but it's like the quality, like they were scanning pages because yeah. files were lost. Yeah. So there's definitely times where I've done binds just because I wasn't happy with the quality of the. Um, preservation of those old books right you know right yeah i guess that's why yeah so that, that's what some people might have done with like a swamp thing by alan moore if they didn't like the recoloring on the absolutes they could just get the single issues and bind those yeah that's always going to be the benefit of custom binding you can do whatever you want are you um do you do table of contents any bonus inner material things like that I haven't been because I also feel like the binds I've done are like so much just for me. And mm-hmm. I'm like, well, you know, I kind of know what I, I vaguely remember. Yeah. I, for yeah. the Green Lantern stuff, I would put it like on the back, like what issues are included in the volume. Mm-hmm. Um, I never went so far as to like map out the table of contents. Uh, I think kind of because I'm intimidated by the process. Do you do that? I do not. No. I mean, there are, I can't it's it's almost impossible just because there are no page numbers like I can't you know there's no reference it's like it doesn't matter I guess what and if I'm binding something with single issues what benefit is there as soon as you get to that issue you'll know what issue it is it says everything on the cover <laughs> it's all right there yeah uh, I used to I used to and it was fun um, but you know it's just extra trips to get stuff printed out and cut up and look really nice and um yeah it, like you said they're these are mostly just for me so uh, i know what's in it um 
I trust myself that I put everything I think that needs to be in it, in it. So um, just dive into the experience and enjoy it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's been my motto. Um, And I mean, I've sold quite a few customs. I haven't heard anyone complain about anything. So I, I guess they're, they're good enough quality for eBay buyers. For sure. Yeah. That's a, a part of it that I might dip my toe into a little this year is like, um, you know, like I was, I, I said, I'm making this like civil war omnibus thing. Mm-hmm. And one thing I always have a, a problem with is when I'm hunting for the issues, especially if I'm yeah. doing eBay, it's like getting the stuff cheap. Oftentimes I'm looking at like lots Yep. So I ended up with all of these duplicates. So this year I'm going to try to do like, I'm going to do a civil war for me and a civil war to sell. Yeah. Uh, which nice. I have, I've never done that before where I've decided to bind something specifically to sell it. Right. Right. But, yeah. Yeah. Me neither. Um, anything I've sold, it's because I, I need to buy, pay for new binds or something. Exactly. Um, yeah. It's always a tough thing to let books go, but sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Yeah. I mean, for me, I know like there's a lot of, uh, there's a limited amount of space I have. Yeah. And um, yeah. yeah, me too. I'm on the same page where it's like, I have four shelves already. I really shouldn't get more. Maybe I should cut down. I have 300 books. Like when I realized <laughs> I have 300 books, it's like, that's more than enough. More than enough. You would think, but you know. <laughs> It'll keep growing to be sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think Matt has like 40 books at his house, 40 of my books right now that I've ordered from like in stock trades or these custom binds. And I couldn't, I was planning to visit him last year and then COVID hit and uh, I couldn't go visit and pick up all those books and drive them back home. So um, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully sometime this year, if not next year. Yeah, I know the vaccines are coming out soon, so it's what they hopefully say. things start to yeah get better. Start opening. Th- it's kind of crazy though, because like we don't. I don't want to make this a COVID chat, but like <laughs> people can still fly to like Mexico and go on vacation. Like I know people who have gone on vacation to like Caribbean islands. Wow, um, and I'm, I'm like, too but, afraid to do that. But Herring and Robinson can't be open. This is yeah. crazy. None of this. I got makes nervous. Sense. I sent them. I so like um, I did. Uh, one of the eBay lots I had picked up last year or the mm-hmm. year before was uh, Supreme because I wanted nice. to do a nice like Alan Moore Supreme yeah. thing. And I, I got that back and it was gorgeous. And then I was like, I have 40 issues of Supreme before Alan Moore comes on. I know they're bad, but I kind of want to get them Liefeld bound. before? It was Who like was it? a whole mix of Liefeld <laughs> okay. clones and stuff. A bunch of the 90s guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I sent that to Herring and Robinson over uh, like a month ago and like right after I sent it I saw like on one of the Facebook message boards like this message from Herring and Robinson that they were closed because mm. California had shut down and I was like is my box of, of really crappy Supreme comments just going <laughs> to sit on their doorstep <laughs> you know yeah yeah that's um, I, I heard that was a big problem for people but they said they were going to finish whatever they received prior to the orders right they're going to finish those the and then order. like i emailed them and i know that they are the the owners are still kind of like checking in on the office so like i know mm. that my books arrived and that they brought them right. inside so i think like you know th- what that is my experience with the binderies has been actually really good and really positive like um, whether it was the library binding company back in the day right. or Haushin or Herring and Robinson, usually like they're, they're small enough that you can email somebody and feel like they're going to get back to you. Mm-hmm. Or at least again, that's been my experience. Yeah. Um, you know, wait times are long, but like for me, they've always been like, Oh, sorry, or we're working on this or, right. you know, even at a time like this where they're closed due to a pandemic they got back to me within like 48 hours. Wow. That's good. Yeah. 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 That's really good. Um, I had heard mixed things about them, but obviously I have no personal experience, so I'm, I'm glad they've been good to you. Yeah. Well, we'll I mean, see so far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially with something as niche as this, it's, um, it's, it's, it's good that they're, they're able to keep up. I say niche, but it feels like it's grown so much. I can't believe it. Yeah. Um, in the best way. I'm really glad. Um, it's good that there are, more die stamp options for people out there because so many people have purchased them. Yeah. Um, it's awesome. Yeah. I can, uh, every day I, I, at least once or twice a day, I think about what, what, what would I want to bind next? Like I was, uh, I was reading 
um, Daredevil by by Chip Zdarsky. He's currently writing it. Yeah. First time reading it. I read the first six issues yesterday morning and uh, powered through all six. I was like, this is unbelievable. I didn't think I would enjoy Daredevil by Zdarsky this much. I He'd always written funny books and like goofy books, but man, he writes a killer Daredevil. And it's like, should I bind this? Daredevil always gets Omnis, though. There's going to be an Omni. There must be an Omni. But they haven't done one for Charles Soule. And it's like, your brain goes into yeah. this thought process at least once or twice a day for me. It's a it's a heavy calculation. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Um, well, cool. I would love to know, um, I know you've you've been talking about this a lot on your channel, but like, what are your big bind like what's the bind you're looking forward to the most in oh, in boy. the year of the bind um tough question there there are a few that i'm looking forward to for various reasons um one of which is i i took the death note all in one edition death notes a, a manga for anyone who's unaware this all in one edition was 2500 pages um, I took that apart. I'm going to make three volumes. I'm really excited about it because it, the, the fact that it was an all-in-one was just fun, a fun thing to do. Like, I don't think I'm ever going to prep a trade paperback larger than 2,500 pages. Um, and it'll be cool too, because it's smaller paper, like it's really small paper. So it'll be a, a unique set of binds for that. Um Another set of books I'm really excited about is uh, recently DC Comics had been doing these black label comics. They're like magazine size comic books. Um, so I'm making two anthologies for those. And um, those are going to be oversized binds, my first oversized binds. And they're, you know, just happened to be that way because the official comics were oversized. Um, so I'm really happy about that, too. That'll be fun to have on my shelf. And uh, Grant Morrison's Green Lantern, of course, because... It's Grant Morrison, not his best work by any stretch of the imagination, but it'll be really nice. And it'll be like a 27 issue bind. So nice. it'll be a nice, juicy, juicy monster on the shelf. Yeah. Yeah. And Liam, Liam Sharp did amazing. Oh. I mean, the artwork on that was gorgeous. I wish they did absolutes for that one for each season. Absolutely. It's great. <laughs> Liam Sharp is, I mean, what a talent. The various yeah. art styles he can do and his detail. It's unbelievable. I yeah. love him um yeah those are those are some of my most anticipated ones and then i something might come up there might be a surprise um i have about like 10 or 12 books at the bindery now um that i'm really looking for so this is sort of a i'll piggyback onto something i wanted to ask you because of the 12 books that i have at the bindery now i think nine of them are books that I'm pretty much going to be reading most of the content in it for the first time when I finally <laughs> get the bind. I just sort of put a little bit of blind faith and sort of like, I'll read six issues if I like it. I'll trust it enough to keep going. Um, is that something you do too? Or is or, or are you able to actually keep up as you go along? Oh, no, not at all. I mean, like, uh, <laughs> you know, if it's a complex mapping, I make sure right. to read everything and so the story flows but like you know there's definitely times where i'm like okay i know i liked this issue and this so i know i want to bind it right but i'm gonna i'm just gonna like put it all together send it off because that's i mean you know like honestly what i wish is that we could i could have just read metal as it was in the bind just going through so there's definitely right. that feeling of like you know uh like i'm gonna do a superior spider-man which i've read the start of but I haven't done the whole thing and I've got the nice. trades. So I'm going to get it bound. And then, then I'll sit down with one book oh, on the couch. God. Finish Superior that Spider-Man is so good. Yeah. I love that book very much. Yeah. That's um, another title I tried was the recent uh, Nick Spencer, amazing Spider-Man. I'm only a few issues in. It's not bad. I'm trying to get more into Marvel. I feel like for some reason I've just gravitated so much towards DC and, and image comics and Marvel's just fallen to the wayside for me. Um, but hopefully, I guess Hulk is going to bring me back. Clearly, Hulk, these Hulk vines that were sent to me by some cosmic force, and I'm now going to be a big Hulk fan. Yeah, I mean, with how many volumes are you getting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like you're 20. committing. It's like twenty. Yeah, but I, I, I look at the list of creators, and I mean, Peter David, Greg Pak, Jason Aaron, yeah, Jeff Loeb. Like, it sounds like a good list of writers and artists. Absolutely. So, fingers crossed. Yeah. 
um, that'll be a, a nice, fun custom bind set. Yeah, for sure. Um, I guess one, one other thing uh, that I'm, I'm a little excited about is um, we are planning to do a few giveaways this year as well. I will quickly, quickly plug that. Um, we, had, we got a bunch of stuff from Valiant last year, a bunch of trade paperbacks. And obviously I'm a huge, I was a huge Valiant fan. I still love their, what I, I call their new golden era, which was like 2013 to 2018, I'd say. Um, fantastic, fantastic stuff. And um, we, so we got a bunch of trades. So we're going to be doing some uh, giveaways for that. Um, an Eternal Warrior bind, uh, Shadow Man bind, things like that. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Just uh, with the intention of getting someone who maybe can't make a custom bind of their own, having a custom bind of their own so they can at least know, you know, what it's like. Um, so I'm very excited to get those out to folks. Oh, that's awesome. Just, that's, a, that's a great I, thing to give away. I love to I love to see people get custom binds. It makes me so happy. Yeah. I mean they're getting a one of a kind item. That's the yeah. only one in existence. Yeah. And um it's interesting because I know myself, like I've messed up binds. I've, you know, sent in sheets, you know, designing the spine and I'll misspell a creator's name and I'll have to get it fixed, or like I'll forget. There was one batch I sent in where I forgot to put the lines at the top and bottom of the spine. Um sort of like this. Like these little lines at the top, um, just a little aesthetic flair. And I'm like, ah, damn, but it's fine. It's not a big deal. It's on my shelf. Like I'm the only one who's going to have to look at it and I can always add them later. So yeah, um, you're, you're a lot more forgiving too, as opposed to like if DC releases something and they have <laughs> like a typo, you're like raising your fist at the air. You're ready to burn their building down. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's Sweet. nice. Well, um, yeah. Well, thank you so much for uh, taking the time uh, to share pleasure. the amazing uh, custom binds that you're working on and all the stuff you guys are doing over on your channel. Yeah. Uh, I'm following it very closely. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it, it was my pleasure. I could talk about custom binds all day. It, w- it would be great if we could um, get Matt at some point to jump on as well so the three of us could talk. He's just uh, He's just doing so many things. I don't know how with all of his children as well. And um, he can pretty much only ever talk after like 10 p.m., which is why our streams are always <laughs> so late. But it's part of the, the THC charm, as we call it. Yeah. Well, we'll figure something out and uh, oh, yeah. uh, maybe do a live show or something. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We can, uh, when we all get some new binds and we can jump on and show off our binds, premiere them to the world together. <laughs> I love it. Sounds well, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Thank you. And, um, you know, for those who ha- are not subscribed already, please head over to the, the hardcover comic, uh, check out their channel. Uh, lots of great content there, reviews, uh, more stuff about comic book binding, uh, a great channel to check out. So make sure to hop over there, subscribe to Mike and Matt um, and watch their amazing stuff. Yeah. And since I, we will also be posting this on our channel, check out the comic archive, which is Mike's channel. We'll leave a link down in the description below as well. Um, Send you right there. Check out his videos. A lot of custom bind stuff going to be happening this year between the two channels. So if you're into that, be sure to subscribe to both because that's pretty much all it's going to be. For sure. I'm speaking for myself. I don't mean to speak. (laughs) No, that's all I'm doing. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Thanks again, Mike. Well, thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed I did. I would definitely love to talk to Mike again. Can't wait to do it probably sometime this year as we continue down the trail of the custom binds. Um, Hopefully we'll have Matt on there with us as well so we can all geek out uh, as a a trinity. Um, That'll be a lot of fun. Thank you all very much for checking out the video. Check out the comic archive, please. If you're from the the comic archive and you've come to this channel, welcome. Can't wait to geek out on comics with you. Let us know what you think about custom binds down in the comments section below. What custom binds are you looking forward to the most this year? What custom binds are your favorites in your collection so far? How do you prep? How do you um, do your reading orders? Do you read all your books before you bind them? Let us know your thoughts down below. Thank you all very much for tuning in. I hope you guys are all doing well, staying safe and sound out there. And if things haven't been go well for you, I hope they get better soon. Thank you all very much for tuning in. This is Mike from the Hardcover Comic. Until next time, as always, you stay classy, Internet.